<laughs> How you doing, Women and Strength Club? I have recorded this video for you, uh, pre-recorded as popularly requested uh, in the group, and this is the video on uh, the simple five-step system that I have for overcoming resistance. Uh, now, what I mean is, by overcoming resistance, is working out how to get around obstacles and blockages that are coming from up in here, okay? Um, works very well for your fitness goals. It's worked very, really well for me, for all of my life's goals, and for my general sense of well-being. Uh, so I'm going to run through those five steps with you. And it's really going to help if there are things that you are coming up against again and again and again um, that are holding you back or there are familiar, familiar unwelcome feelings that you have that you'd like to learn how to um, step around or, or even completely get rid of and eradicate. Um, this is the mastermind that I did at my Strength and Social. Uh, and this is going to be a shorter version of it. So for those of you that were there, here's, this is going to hopefully be a nice reminder. You've already heard the story that's about to come. If you haven't, um, then I'm going to kick this off with a bit of a story about my past, not in too much detail, um, but enough to demonstrate, oh, you savage fucking cunt. <laughs> uh. enough to demonstrate to you um, the power of this system okay now let's me let me uh, first of all set the scene all right I'm a young boy, really young, like kid, um, young kid. My mum is as fucking crazy as a box of frogs, uh, with a really wicked tongue, um, and is, I guess, if we were to put a label on it these days, a uh, verbally and emotionally abusive woman. Um, now, this is because of her own uh, mental health issues that she has, which, as a man nearing 40, I fully understand. Um, but as a kid of five or six or whatever I was back in the day, uh, and as a teenager and, and a young man as well, I, I never really had any full understanding of, of why my mum would be like she was. So I only really saw the outcome, which was her being... I uh, say, a bully, uh, emotionally and verbally abusive uh, to me and my sister. Um, so, I'm a little kid. Uh, I'm with my mum. Uh, her and my dad split up. And there was this thing that happened to me. And uh, through following this five-step process, I, I came upon this massive and sudden realisation one day that this one incident had been the cause of, of a lot of the uh, unhappiness in my life. A lot of the things that I had done were because of some because of this thing that happened. Uh, and a lot of the things that I had allowed to happen to me were because of this thing. Um, so the thing. Basically, my mum and dad split up when I was really little. Me and my little sister bouncing backwards and forwards between the two. Um, at this particular time, we were with my mum, staying with my mum at her auntie's house. Uh, her auntie had chucked her out and we were relocated to a bed and breakfast by the council. And um, in this bed and breakfast, my mum met the guy who would become my stepdad and the father of my half-brother and half-half-half-brother <laughs> and half-sister, um, who are basically, I see them as my brother and sister. But anyway, the guy was a total cunt. Um, but that's another story. So anyway, we're in this bed and breakfast, and uh, her, you know, this guy and, and my mum, they meet. And, and one night, um, we're in the B&B room. So you picture the scene, it's uh, one big bed, which is my mum's bed, and then a bunk bed 
Top one for me, bottom one for my sister. Now, at the middle of the night, I wake up to the sound of two voices. One's this guy who becomes my stepdad, one's my mum. Um, and the guy's basically saying, uh, it's a good job the kids aren't awake, especially Jonathan, because he's he'd blab his mouth off and go ahead and tell everyone. Now, obviously, they'd just been having sex, right? But I didn't know that. I was too young to know what that even was. Um, but what happened was, I took that to mean that there was something about me that was wrong, right? Um, and that allowed, or that meant that I allowed myself to be treated in a certain way, and that meant that I behaved in a certain way for over a decade. Um, and I didn't really figure out that it was that one thing that changed my own self-belief um, until less than two years ago. Um, I, I got there using this five-step system, right? Um, but because I suddenly started to think that I was a little bit less than everybody else for some reason, because of what I heard that night, um, I, I, I allowed myself to be treated in a certain way. I allowed my mum and my stepdad, this fella, to speak to me in a certain way. I allowed myself to be bullied uh, without standing up to the people, even though I knew that I could physically stop them if I wanted to, because I was always a strong kid. Um, but I allowed it to happen. Uh, I, I carried out behaviours because I thought I was less of a person than other people. Um, drugs, crime, all, all sorts of bad behaviours and negative behaviours. Ended up living in uh, a bedsit at, at the age 16, 17, uh, taking heroin, robbing people, and basically doing loads of really bad stuff, feeling sorry for myself and feeling like I was less of a person than everybody else, okay? Um, now, that went on in certain different ways most of my life. Um, and it was only through determination and a deep, deep, deep-seated belief that somehow this was fucking wrong uh, that I kind of used anger and determination and bloody-mindedness to kind of get me uh, so far out of this pit of fucking despair that I dug for myself. Um, but I could never quite get as far as I wanted to. I, I would always burn it down or I'd do something to cause myself to, to take steps backwards or whatever. Um, and then I came upon this five-step system, right? Now, what this five-step system did was allow me to really address my feelings. And at the beginning, I did this solidly for weeks and weeks and weeks. And at the beginning, um, it was very surface-led. The feelings were surface-led. The beliefs, the emotions, uh, and the things that came out of this process were surface-led. But as I kept on doing it, and as I kept on digging, just through trial and error and, and getting better at the process, I got deeper and deeper and deeper into it. And I started to gain more and more and more of an understanding of me and where my behaviours had come from. And it was only, like I say, I think it was last year, I was laying on the gym floor, post-workout, in a mess, you know, you know how it is, you're fucking breathing heavily, your heart's racing, you're feeling sick and you're all sweaty, you collapse on the gym floor. I was in my gym on my own and all of a sudden something just dropped in and I remember this conversation but I remembered it in a whole new context and I suddenly realised there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing about me that's less than anybody else and the reason I've always thought that, it, that there was is because of that one overheard conversation when I was fucking four or five years old. So that's how powerful this system is. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk you through it. Uh, it's a simple five-step system. I'm going to teach you how to do it very, very quickly. Okay. If at the end of this, you want to reach out for some help, um, reach out to me privately by all means, and I'll see if I can help you with it. Okay. So, Let's get to the slides. Uh, the first step in this system is to identify when you are having a, a negative or unwelcome feeling. Okay, And you need to recognize that, so start looking out for it. 
You'll either, you'll, you, you may well know what they are already because they may be very fucking familiar. Um, but start to look out for when you get an unwanted, an unwelcome or unpleasant feeling or thought process that you don't want to have. Okay? And ask yourself, and you, know, so you need to write this shit down when you do it. What am I feeling and where am I feeling it? This is the first thing you need to ask yourself. What am I feeling? Now, ugh, I'm going to read some stuff. I'm not going to read the whole thing out. Uh, but I'm going to go through uh, some examples of what you might be feeling or what I have written down in my own journal. Okay, So one day, I was thinking about um, the fact that I was going off to see someone for a, a business mentoring day. Um, and I suddenly had these feelings of, oh, what if the guy decides he doesn't like me because he finds me annoying and he cancels the whole day, right? So it's a totally irrational feeling, but I was feeling, and I was like, I, I don't want to feel like this. I know this is crazy. I don't want to feel this way. Um, so what am I feeling? This is what I'm feeling. Where, where was I feeling it? I was feeling it in my chest and my stomach, okay? So this is like fear and sadness, Okay, if, you, if you're feeling it up in your neck and your shoulders, that's generally a uh, feeling related to anger. If it's in your chest, then it's generally related to sadness. And if it's in your belly, it's generally generally related to fear. Okay, so I this was what I was feeling. I was feeling it in my chest and my belly. Okay, so um, that was a fear and sadness reaction to what I was feeling. All right, so ask yourself, what are you feeling at this time? And whereabouts are you feeling it? Write that down. When I think about so-and-so, I notice that I feel like blah, 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 blah. And I feel it in my blah, 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 blah. And, and just get it out. It doesn't matter if you're, if you, you know, you, you can do this and it, it, it's a self-teaching system. The more often you do it, the better you'll get at it. Okay, so that's the first step. Second step, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel angry, sad, or afraid about this situation? Why am I having these thoughts? Why do I feel this way? Now, this takes a little bit of reflection. And again, this is the part of the process that, for me, starts at very much at a surface level. And the first few times you do this, you might stay at that surface level. At some point, your brain's going to start digging a little bit deeper as you get used to the process, and you'll start to realize, um, you'll start to, to get to some deeper meaning. Now, for example, for me, why do I feel like this? I feel like this about everything good in my life. I'm scared that things might be taken away. Uh, I know this is because of my childhood and my mum's behavior, etc., etc. Uh, this is a cycle that I go through, and I want to break it. Okay, so I felt that particular way because this thing that I was afraid of had happened to me so many times in the past, okay? Is it still true though, is 2.1. Is it still true? So is it true for me that people suddenly and randomly decide that they don't like me? No, it's fucking not, man. <laughs> it's completely mental and irrational, but it's there anyway. But I can identify it and I can call that motherfucker out and say this shit is not true, okay? Very powerful question when you're having these types of unwelcome feelings. So the next step is to ask yourself, what do you want to feel instead and what would your life be like if this were true? So what would I would like to feel instead? I'd like to feel that I was a totally likable person, that I had charisma, likability, good sense of humour, I was fun to be around and that people warmed to me and that people found me valuable and had and felt good to have me around. That's what I would rather feel. And if that if like if that were true, life would be fantastic. Well guess what? You can decide that that's true. You can choose your belief. So rather than choose a belief that you are an annoying person and people decide they don't like you, choose the belief that you are a likable person. And people do like you and they want to have you around. You get to choose that. And that will affect how your life can be. Okay. So what is it that you'd like to feel instead of these unwelcome and untrue feelings? And what would your life be like if that were true instead? And therefore, 
What is your new belief and perception? Say it out loud. Write it down as well. Commit to it and believe it. Okay, be brave. Have fun with it. And finally, therefore, what actions am I consciously committed to? How do I make this new belief and perception real? What are the things I'm going to do? What are the habits and patterns that I'm going to break? What are the new habits and patterns that I'm going to create? Okay. Now, this might sound difficult, but it's really, really easy if you make it fun, if you make it into a bit of a game, if you accept that when you first start doing it, it's not going to be as powerful as the 5th, 6th, 7th or 10th or 15th time you do it. But the fact is you're going to do it. Your first conscious commitment could be to doing the five steps more often. To writing something down every morning. This process only takes 5, 10, 15 minutes. Okay? That's the five-step process. Let me just quickly run through that one more time. Quick time. Number one, what am I feeling? Where am I feeling it? Why do I feel this way? And why do I feel angry, sad, or afraid? Is this actually true? What do I want to feel instead? And what would my life be like if this were true? What is my new belief and perception? Say it loud, write it down, commit to it, believe it. And what actions am I consciously committed to to make my new belief and perception a reality? So there we go. That's the five-step process to overcoming resistance. It's very fucking powerful. Um, let me know what you think. Peace out.